So why not just save your money and buy a good guitar? Hey everybody, Jay Allen, welcome back to the channel. So I hear that comment a lot, just save your money and buy a good guitar instead of buying these cheap guitars because you'll never make your money back on those if they don't hold their value and they don't stay in tune and on and on and on. So I went out and bought a good guitar, okay? <laughs> this is a Fender Stratocaster made in Mexico. Uh, did buy it used, a uh, local guitar shop helping support the local economy. And uh, we're going to talk about this as compared to some of the cheapies that I've bought. And then we're going to do a blind sound test to see if you can tell the difference between this and a cheap guitar. So let's get started. Okay, so again, this is a, a genuine Fender Stratocaster. Uh, this is a made in Mexico version, which some people I'm sure will race to the comments and tell me how this isn't a real Fender Stratocaster because it wasn't made in the United States or that this isn't a good guitar. But considering that most of the guitars hanging on my wall are under some are around a hundred dollars. I think the most expensive one was maybe 325. Um, the Fireflies I got good deals on. Those are usually, you know, uh, under 200. Sometimes they're more than that, depending on when they came out. Uh, so this guitar, uh, brand new, I think it's around 700. Uh, I paid a little over six for it. I probably paid too much for it, but you know, local guitar shops, uh, they're, they sell used gear. They can't sell Fender Stratocasters because they can't get, uh, they don't sell enough guitars to get licensed to be a dealer. And so they deal with a lot of used gear. And so somebody comes in and hey, I got this Fender, you wanna buy it? And you know, the person that's selling it to them wants to make a decent amount of money on it. And so the person selling it at the shop of course has to mark it up too. So that's what you get. You get, uh, you know, fairly expensive used gear uh, at a shop, local shop, uh, which is fine. I don't, I don't have a problem paying a little bit more. You know, I probably could have bought a brand new uh, made in Mexico from uh, Amazon or whatever. That's fine. Uh, but uh, this one is uh, in really good shape. I mean, it's pretty much mint condition. It's got a few little checks here uh, in the paint on the neck joint. I mean, that's kind of common with these. Okay, so let's talk about specs on this guitar. Okay, so right now, I just looked it up. Right now at Musician's Friend, this particular uh, guitar is $100 off. So it's $599, it's normally 700 bucks. And I think I paid six twenty nine for it, and with tax and everything, it came out to right around seven hundred. Uh, so it's uh, it's so it's an alder body, uh, maple neck. Uh, it's got the skunk stripe uh, in the back. Uh, the whole neck has got a gloss finish. There's gloss even on the fretboard. I've never been a big fan of that. I don't know why, but it doesn't seem to bother me. Um, uh, frets are nice. They're they're the they're not super tall. I like that's the one thing I like about uh, Stratocaster style guitars is the frets aren't very tall. A uh, really heavy-handed player, so when I play, things go out of tune. I get criticized a lot for my guitars being out of tune because I press down too hard. Uh, I'm so used to playing acoustic. Uh, my technique is not great either. I'm you know I I don't have any finesse, and so I you know. I think that attributes somewhat to my uh, being being out of tune. Uh, three ply pick guard and sort of the I don't even know how to describe it. It's almost a green tone. This is a sea foam green metallic, mint green metallic paint. If you know what uh, movie that uh, is in reference to, put it in the comments. Um, three single coils. These are all Nico uh, pickups. Uh, it's got the sort of old style logo on the headstock. It's the it's the black with the gold outline. Sort of the I don't know if you call that the modern script or whatever. It's not. It doesn't look vintage. 
and then the tuners are fender uh, labeled tuners bent steel saddles these are fender labeled saddles uh, it's got the six uh, six screw trim on it and uh, you know everything else is pretty standard buttons are kind of the same is what you would find on anything else and the back plate is pretty much the same okay so I'm probably certain that the pots are full size the five-way switch feels pretty good uh, being that this was I think from 2018 and it said early 2018 so I'm sure the switch has seen some use so it feels a little loose um, and I'm I'm not sure what kind of nut we have here this might be bone and then access to the truss rod in the front uh, what else can we say about it 22 frets nine and a half inch fret radius they call these medium jumbo frets but I don't know if it's because they're wider they're not very tall so I don't know uh, 43 millimeter nut 25 and a half inch scale length and uh, it's calling these player series Stratocaster pickups so the thing is everybody says buy a good guitar um, you know so this uh, Firefly is <laughs> an amazing guitar uh, for the money it's uh, roasted maple neck it's got locking tuners on it it's got a bone nut actual rosewood fretboard it's got the neat uh, truss rod adjustment down you know in the at the bottom of the neck that sticks out uh, these are all Nico pickups uh, it's got a humbucker in it it's got the two point trim on it uh, five-way switch no coil tap um, and then this one's got a compound tapered neck so it's it's a different radius you know on the outside not the fretboard itself but the neck is a different radius here than it is here it flattens out here um, this one doesn't really do that it's hard to explain but anyway uh, and then the body contours on this one are are a little more you know they they uh, they've added you know so you can reach the frets better I guess but I, I don't know if, I don't think it makes a difference but it looks kind of cool and then the block here where the neck is attached is tapered also um, like I said this I think alder body might have been ash I can't remember um, pretty similar weight this got stainless steel frets on it uh, the firefly and uh, so, and really nice inlays. Uh, these are uh, abalone inlays in the, uh, for the dots. And these are just black ABS. So, what makes this good and this not? Is it the name on the headstock? Is that it? Is it the country of origin? This one was made in China. This one was made in Mexico. Um, I gotta tell you, for all intents and purposes, these are the same guitar. And this one was under $200. And this one, even used, if you're buying local, unless you can find, uh, a, you know, buying it from the owner who can maybe get it down to around 500 bucks. Maybe 450 if you're really lucky. I haven't seen too many made in Mexico strats that are in really good condition uh, secondary market that were much less than four. I've seen some for 350 and they were really beat up. So I'm just curious what, uh, what people think. Why is this one so much better than this one? And we should save our money and buy this one instead of this one. Some people will argue that the Firefly brand, you know, that they don't have good quality control and they don't have good customer service. Well, that could be true, um, you know, but you could also have a bad experience with a name brand. Um, 
Now these do have a two year warranty, so if you, if you have trouble with it, you should be able to send it back. And then they say, oh, well these are set up so much better than the cheap ones. Well, the Firefly guitars are really set up well um, before they go out. And unfortunately, as much as I like to talk these up, uh, some people in the discussion groups have been having issues uh, with these. They'll they'll get them, and they're not they're not you know. So I don't know if their factories are like they get them from different factories. They don't get them from the same factory all the time to try to meet demand, and so quality can fluctuate. Uh, I really don't know, but I do know this particular guitar right here is very very nice guitar for under two hundred dollars so then the infamous squire debut that raised such a stink on my channel when i did the review of it um, this is a laurel fretboard but it it's really dark it looks like rosewood um, Poplar body, maple neck, unfinished maple neck. Uh, people have been busting my chops over saying the word unfinished. They're saying, well, it's just satin finish. That might be. Uh, the Yamaha Pacifica feels like bare wood. This might have a very, very thin coat of something on it. But there certainly isn't a ton of finish on it. Um, but, uh, and then they do the matte finish on the body, which a lot of people complained about. But, you know, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that this guitar, this guitar is better than this guitar. Um, I mean, if you're going to play out and you're going to sort of beat your guitar up and really use it, I would probably go with something like this or the Firefly. That's a heavier wood and the full thickness body and has better components in it. I found out right away that this guitar, uh, the pots in it, uh, one of the tone pots, um, broke basically when I was pulling the tone knobs off. So there you go. You could say that quality isn't as good on one of these guitars, but it's still a good guitar for the money. It was 120 bucks, especially if you're a bedroom player or just starting out, there's nothing wrong with this guitar. So it begs the question, why save your money to buy a good guitar when you can get a decent serviceable guitar for a hundred bucks, beat up on it, play it, you know, really use it and abuse it until you're sure that you want to play guitar or you're like me and you don't play that often, you know, for somebody that does a guitar channel and I'm in a band, but I play bass in the band, I don't pick up my electric guitars as much as I would like to. So if I have a hundred dollar guitar hanging on the wall and I walk by it every day going, man, I should play that thing. It's going to sting a lot less than walking by a $700 guitar or walking by, you know, thousand dollar two thousand three thousand dollar guitar um you know i mean i certainly wouldn't argue save your money and buy a guitar that was over a thousand dollars i may cap it at you know six seven i mean seven is a little a little getting up there as far as i'm concerned uh two three hundred maybe is good um so let's do a little bit of a shootout here and uh see how these things sound and I'm going to do it blind so you guys don't know which guitar is which and that way you can you can tell me which one is the good one and which one is the cheap one so let's do it okay here we are all set up and uh, I'm just using a fairly clean channel uh, this is the setup I used the other day when I was recording uh, miking the amplifier and uh, that was this for this example that's what i was doing that for uh, so we're going to play three guitars maybe four maybe we'll stick a fourth one in there um unfortunately the the firefly has uh 
a humbucker in it and this one doesn't so we'll see we'll see what happens i might just do th three single coil maybe i'll throw the firefly in there and just and just do uh between the middle you know middle pickups in the bridge pickup uh, so here we go <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, could you tell the difference? Um, kind of hard to tell, but, uh, but the guitars do sound different. You know, do they sound different because some of them sound bad and some of them sound good? So, interested to see what your opinion is. I, for one, know where I stand on the whole debate. Uh, I like a guitar that's fairly inexpensive because I'm not playing out. I'm not playing every day. Um, and I like, I like guitars. So <laughs> I like to buy guitars and uh, I like to mess around with them and maybe send them on down the road, maybe tweak them, you know, mess around with them. Uh, so that's kind of, kind of what I do. So, uh, it's not really in the budget to buy, you know, thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollar guitars and have them hanging on the wall. So, you know, I don't have a problem one way or the other. If people want to buy expensive gear, that's great. I guess uh, I'm kind of on the same side as uh, Glenn Fricker. He's always talking about differences between really expensive gear and cheap gear, especially when it comes to uh, being in the recording studio. I think what a lot of us YouTubers who review gear are trying to do by promoting the cheap gear is to save people from spending a lot of money needlessly especially if you're spending it thinking you're going to increase you know the the tone like like the more you spend the better you're going to sound and and i kind of had that you know that mindset for a long time that, oh i got to get a good guitar i got to get a good guitar and so when i was playing out uh we were, my friend and I were playing every weekend in the summer at the farm market, uh, just acoustic show. And I had a fairly decent uh, acoustic guitar. I had, I had spent, I think, about 600 bucks on a really good acoustic. It was all solid wood. And uh, it sounded great in the store. And uh, I think I've told this story before. And uh, I was like, man, I got you know, to get a name brand because this was a Chinese, it was Eastman brand is what I bought, and that's a Chinese uh, brand. And I'm like, oh, I gotta get a, I gotta get a Martin or a Taylor, and so I got a Taylor, and I was really disappointed with that because uh, the fret ends, I don't know how to explain it, but the the ends of the frets were filed at such an angle this way that the high E would slide right off the edge of it. It was so. I mean, they had filed them really far. And so when you'd press down on that string, it would slide right off. And so I ended up selling that one. And uh, then I bought a Martin. I got a Martin uh, D28. And I think I played a Martin, uh, a lesser expensive Martin uh, for a while too. And I don't know, I didn't, you know. And I'm sitting there playing, holding this, you know, $2,000 guitar at a farm market and I'm like, <laughs> why do I have this guitar? It doesn't sound any better than my $600 Eastman or, you know, whatever. So anyway, that's kind of where I'm at with the whole cheap guitar thing. I mean, people get kind of riled up about, I don't know why, I don't, I just don't, I don't understand. Uh, I don't know, some people's comments are just baffling. I just, I don't understand the, the animosity towards you know if somebody wants to play a two by four with strings on it and they think it sounds good who cares it's like it doesn't you know if you want to spend six thousand on a prs and play it go right ahead nobody's saying you you shouldn't be allowed to do that it's like but why you know why get upset about people that are playing cheap stuff so i don't know i guess i don't understand the whole the whole debate uh you know it just doesn't I don't know. So that's kind of my whole thing here. Not to prove, you know, that I'm right and everybody's wrong. I mean, that's not what it's about. It's just to say, hey, you know, this stuff sounds fine, you know, and it, and it really depends on what, what you're, you're doing with it too. And, you know, you definitely want a guitar that's built well and it's going to withstand punishment if you're playing every single day and if you're gigging and you're you know you know you're going to want multiple guitars actually i mean that's why these these you know people that play out all the time they've got a you know a crate that they take with them that's full of guitars and if they're you know a fairly well-known name they've got a guitar tech that you know tunes all this stuff up and keeps it keeps it ready to go for them so 
but you know people like us that are down here in our basements or our bedrooms playing and or you know maybe we want to record something once in a while or we hang out with the guys you know on the weekend guys or gals on the weekend and play then you know these are just fine so um yeah anyway there you go there's my there's my rant there's my comparison uh appreciate everybody for tuning in i'm going to try to figure out uh what to talk about uh going forward um I know I'm not talking about Tonewood anymore. Um, I, mean, I, I think I have one more thing I want to cover with that, and then I'm done talking about that. And then cheap reviewing cheap guitars, too. It's like I can only buy so many guitars, and especially strats. I'm definitely over strats. Um, you know, um, so I need to figure out where to take the channel next, maybe start to uh, review different lessons that people offer try to increase my knowledge and of music theory and my playing ability uh, I really like to learn how to play drums and mic drums and I want to start getting into more of the studio stuff and then I've always got people on me about doing the CNC stuff and I really need to get back to that um, so but yeah you know maybe cover pedals or recording amps or, or amp different amps I got a, a amp head that I want to get that I want to try out um, so, yeah, so if you've got any ideas, things you want to see, things you might want me to talk about, uh, put some ideas in the comments, and uh, we'll see you here next time on Jay Salen Guitar.